Welcome back to the City of Palms podcast. Thank you for watching, viewing, and subscribing. Episode, Episode 85. 85. Eddie Rock, <laughs> how you doing, bro? Doing good, man. How you guys doing? We're doing good. We're getting fired. How's your day today? Oh, uh, man, you know, living life as a musician, engineer. It's always a good day, man. I still think it's a bad day with us. Heck yeah. Did you, did you have that session earlier? At the facility? I did, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was okay. It was pretty solid. Not too bad. Another day on the job. How long have you been over there at the facility? I've been working there for like three years now. What was it 2021? Yeah. Yeah, about three years. Crazy. Almost three years to the day, and I think about it. I got filled in one session for promo and it just never stopped. Sick. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Yeah, crazy. That's dope. So, how was that? How was the feeling of fi- filling that in? Because before that, I'm guessing you were just a producer doing your own thing? Yeah, well, you know, like everybody else, bedroom stuff, you know, just kind of like taking in little sessions here and there with the homies and stuff. Uh, but pretty much, it wasn't a situation where I applied or anything. I was always there. I was doing like crazy stuff where I would be working like a graveyard shift at one job, you know, and like it was like I think two or like ten thirty. Then I would like fly to the studio and like shower Cappy for like another three hours and then like knock out. I kept doing that after a while. And then one day I was there with the my guy Chris Daniels and we were working on like a, a song or something. And Cappy just kind of like touched me on the shoulder and like. And I was yeah. like, yeah, it was like a quick two hour session. I remember the, the session, I was bad. Oh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just, it felt great. I was like, yo, this is what I want to do. And then from there, I just kept filling in, filling in, filling in until it became like a, an in-house engineer over there. Damn, nice. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Yeah. Go. What all did he have you do that day? Was it all stuff you were pretty familiar with, but like still needed to work on? Or was there stuff you had no idea? Well, yeah, so when you're working from home and like a very like amateur, like, state there's a lot of workarounds to professional studio environments so like i would find in the tempo of a song on virtual dj at the home you know what i mean so like i get the crib somebody brings a song i pop it into a different program oh yeah I have, like two computers doing like basic stuff and uh over there there was no virtual dj so i'm looking at the artist <laughs> and they're looking back at me and it's just like yo <laughs> <laughs> You know, you just, a lot of it was like fake it till you make it. And I, I realized that without having like a formal education, it was going to be a tougher road, but it was a better road for me. So, yeah, it was it was a lot of stuff that I should have known. I actually didn't know. That's really what it was. Not so much uh, things that I I wasn't aware of. Just things I, 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 I can't even have to do. <laughs> yeah. You said you don't have a formal education with music? I believe in that. Dang. I believe in that. Do you have a, uh, what was your high school like? Like, where'd you go to high school, right? Uh, so I'm from Miami. I'm not from out here. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, over there, once again, I was the only kid I knew that was really making music. You know, people were coming over to the house. We were making music in my kitchen, right? Because, like, the kitchen, like, the dining area, that's where my computer was next to the fridge. And, yeah, man, you know, just, like, cranking out songs like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my, my high school stuff, it was, I would always be making music, but it was nothing like... Here's how you EQ. Uh, nah, I don't need to tell me anything. Like mm-hmm. So did you start producing first, or or making music on your like writing music? And- yeah. So I don't, I only engineer because I'm an artist, and like uh-huh. growing up, I was just like, nobody's gonna pay for this session for me. Nobody's gonna like do it for me. So I just had to learn. I was going on YouTube all the time. I had one friend who was just a little bit better than me. He showed me everything he knew, and I was like, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take this like that. Damn. That was all in high school when that was happening? Yeah, a lot of that was in high school. Yeah, I, I didn't really figure things out until uh, when I moved here, really. And that's, uh, I moved here about 2016, so I never how long, about five years ago. Um, I, I just, once again, in uh, the, not the dorms, but like the apartments by GCU, just cranking songs with people from school every day until things just started clicking. Damn, sick. Nice. What, what made you choose this area? <laughs> uh, so, Dunk City, I saw that stuff happening in, in uh, high school and I was like, oh. I didn't even know about Fort Myers at all. Like, I knew about Naples, I had no idea about, uh, about Fort Myers. So I saw that, I, when I applied to school over there, I think I only applied to FGCU and FAU. Uh, I got accepted to FGCU quick, I was like, oh, that's the school I'm going to. And then for some reason, I ended up not coming in 2013 when I like graduated high school. And I came in 2016 just because it was just like, I said I was going to go to school there. I'm going to go to school there. Like, that was the that was the end goal at all times. But that's pretty much what brought me here. Heck yeah. Nice. What was your major going to school there? Journalism. 
Nice. Yeah, that's did what, did that's you end finish the degree? Yeah, yeah, I was working at Wait News. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was doing a degree. I was working for Curate, the like the Curate interviews and Curate podcast stuff, and uh, working at Wait News. Yeah. yeah, Sick. yeah. Damn. So, so when did you quit Wait News? I uh, like two months ago. Damn. And then you you started full time at the facility. No, I was full time at the facility already. Already. Oh, I was yeah. just doing both. Oh fuck. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So what was what was Wing News like? What the hell? I was kind of trash though. Yeah, <laughs> uh yeah, no, I mean I was working like graveyard shifts. So I was doing like two a.m. to ten thirty, uh, two a.m. to twelve thirty, like running those kind of shifts. Um, and it wasn't like what I liked with curate and just music journalism, right? Like. Uh, prior to that, I had interviewed uh, Dom, uh, so I did like a Dom McFly interview. I had um, done like a lot of like music reviews and like album reviews and stuff. And then working there, it was like this child just got shot. And I was like, whoa! I did not come for this. So, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I wasn't really into like the hard hitting news and like the you know sexual assault, kidnapping. Like here's what your city officials are doing behind your back. I'm not really into that. Yeah. Like I, as a citizen, I like it, but like that's not what I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, probably depressing. Probably working as you. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. So it gets scarier than that. Working in news, it's not when things depress you; it's when things stop depressing you. When you become mm -hmm. so desensitized that like that type of trauma is content. When everybody walks in. We are covering the worst day of somebody's life. We say, "Damn, that sucks," and then the next day, we don't care. Dang, right, we're on to, and yeah, and when that becomes your job, and it's just like people die, people get shot, people get robbed, people's houses burn down, and you're just like, sucks to suck. I need to do this for work. It it tears away at a part of you that you want to keep as a person. Um, yeah, like, really sympathizing. Damn, that's Damn. real. So, were you working on the journalism for Curate and Wink both at the same time while you were the, in FGCU? Yeah, but not for long. So, uh, I worked at Wink after I graduated at FGCU. I worked at Curate while I was still there. And oh, there was like gotcha. a little interlap. There was like an overlap at one point where it was FGCU, not FGCU, but it was Wink, Curate, and Facility at the same time for like a month. And oh man, <laughs> creative flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was bad. But nah, most of those things don't overlap too much. Did you meet Malik and them uh, at FGCU? Yeah, so I was at FGCU and I uh, I went with Chris Daniels. He had a release party for like an EP he did. And we went, and I loved it. It was like one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. Like for somebody who's not like a full fledged artist, that man can put on a show. He just like a natural born entertainer. So we pulled up, and I was like, "Yo, I gotta check out this EP." So I checked out the EP, and I wrote a review because I'm the entertainment editor at FGCU. Sick. So I wrote a review, and then he gets back to Malik, and he's like, "Yo, meet up. Let's talk about doing some curious stuff." And then we we linked up, and then that that's kind of how that uh, kind of formed. Sick. Yeah. Does FGCU cover a lot of like local music releases and stuff like that? I haven't really like looked at the news a lot. It did when I did. So like, as the editor of the entertainment section, I am heavily partial to music. So I didn't give a fuck about movies. I didn't give a fuck about acting, fashion, any of that shit. I was like, yo, we're doing album reviews for local artists every week. Yes, because it's sometimes just like Toy Story Five came out. Yeah, nah, 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 not with me. Nah, more like Slack just dropped the EP. <laughs> Dominic Fight got signed. Yeah, exactly right. Like those are my stories. My stories are all local albums and stuff because the music was here and I knew it. It was 2017 and I called it. I was like, yo, the artists here are fired. And it was kind of those things where people were slow to it. Yep. Or they thought it was okay, but because it didn't have the kind of clout that, like, you know, Don brought or Busy brought or Cappy brought, it was just like, oh, I mean, they're good, but, like, it's good for here. Like, no, it's good for it's good for You know, and so that was kind of my thing was I always believed you could go a whole day listening to local music and you could have a good music listening day. I, I truly believe that. That's real. Yeah. 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 Dude, that's cool that you were doing that for the for the community. Yeah, Dude, that's big. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's man. huge. When did you do the interview with Dom? Was that before his signing or after? Or like right around that whole craziness? It was, it was before. It was the, that was the day I met him. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that's how I met him. What was that like? That was cool, man. He's a cool guy. Um, he is. Pretty much, uh, I think I hit him up on like Twitter or something. Uh, at that point, I already knew Nate Traveler. Um, and I went over to where he was at, and we kind of just like talked for a bit. 
I, I still have the interview. I listen to it like once every like three months. I, I'm never gonna release it, but um, nah, it was just cool. It was like super enlightening. Um, and one of those things that like gives me chills when I listen to it now. I bet hearing some of the things that we talked about and not knowing what's coming down. down. You know, uh, I think that same day I also met Brendan Bennett. Um, I met Dominic Salem, fire guitarist. I met Phil. I don't know if you guys know Phil. Um, yeah, a lot of the people who whose music I respected before and I still respect to this day. It was a, it was a crazy day. One of the best interviews I've ever done. That's dope, dude. That's a big, that was big. That was a big day. Damn. Yeah. I, I think the first time I heard you was on. Um, I think it was when uh, on a Brendan Bennett track. I heard you as a feature, nice, and, nice. and that was right when I was like kind of learning about music around here and, mm-hmm. and realizing that this is radio quality good. You yeah. know what I mean? What does it feel like to be a part of that? Because I feel like now working at the facility and being a part of the journalistic like historian aspect of it, like mm-hmm. a lot of things are happening around here, and there's really talented people and being someone who can help them produce that music professionally mm-hmm. or at that level, what does that feel like? Um, well, I mean, it's a little surreal. Like, first and foremost, I met everybody, like you said, as an artist. And to this day, that's still how I link with most people. Uh, so it's cool because I know what the potential for this place is, and I know what it's currently achieving. There are things happening that people don't know about that, like, I don't know this comes out in like three weeks. Everybody's going to be like, oh my God, something crazy just happened. I can't tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but like I just know about like everything that's happening behind the scenes. And so to contribute to it, it's really cool because it's the foundations of what this place is considered by like A&Rs to be like a music hub, right? Like I've talked to like A&Rs and uh, managers and other people like that are kind of like talking to me about like, my own music and be like, you know, how is it that like, there's so many artists that are getting picked up from this one area. Like that's Atlanta for rap, but for this alternative kind of like quasi pop sound that you guys got going on, this is like a hub and there's a whole bunch of fire artists. So to add to it is a big responsibility, right? There's not too many people who can help. Mm-hmm. And one of the scariest feelings is knowing that there's artists that are highly capable of making great music and they feel like I can't do it here. I have to go to Miami, I have to go to Tampa, I have to go somewhere else. So when they walk into the studio or when I interview somebody or when I do a song with somebody, it's just like, there's a lot of weight to prove that everything you need is here, Mm. right? You know, I can't let you feel like this place isn't good enough because it is. It's been in the past and it is now and it's going to continue to be. If I can do anything about it, this place is going to be a player. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the goal. Hell yeah, dude. That's dope, dude. And it must feel good. Like, like you were saying, it must feel great. Yeah. Because the facility is a huge part of that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like a lot of the big yeah. things that have happened around here already, that's kind of the origin of some of it. Yeah, no, it is. Like if somebody's doing something of note, nine times out of 10, they're working at the facility. There's like very few artists. Like Just Lowe's like one of the only people I'm just like, yo, where does this kid record at? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but aside from him, that's about it. Like everybody else that's doing like something huge, well, they're like a couple more. But like anybody else is doing anything like, oh my God, they're pulling up, mm-hmm. right? They yeah, have a folder sure. at, the st- at the spot, you know, I can open your folder and show you, yo, this artist that everybody likes, this is where their songs are located, yeah. right here, you know? Yep. Yeah, when we interview artists, the facility is always the place where it's like, yo, we got this big thing, we're going to the facility here, yeah. it's gonna be there. Yeah, yeah. That's, yep. that's a shit. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yeah, they know what's up. Yeah. To rewind a little bit, where did where did things start with you creating music of your own? Like, it, it just in your life? What were some of, like, the things in your childhood that made you musically inclined? Did you sing or anything? Nah, nah, nah. Um, I mean, I'm like a bars guy. Like, when I listen to ID, like, you got the ID on my shirt on, that's, Shout that's out me all day. I was like, Isaiah Rashad, you know, like, Black Hippie and TDE. Like, that's me. Like, that singing stuff is a lot more... Uh, it's more recent in my musical journey. So, I mean, I was doing the bar stuff, but it, it came from where I think all creatives come from. Like a kid that feels mad, misunderstood, and it's just like super introspective, you know what I mean? I was like, I always thought I was like kind of funny, but like I wasn't like cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. And uh, I knew that when I made songs, number one, I was at a school that won like three straight basketball state championships. I was not going to stand out playing basketball, and I like basketball, so I was like, nah, I need a different route. I got to, you know, start my brand somewhere. So I started making music. All the basketball players would come to the house, 
<laughs> all the basketball players were at. Every basketball player was at. So I was like, but so that kind of like helped me like you know socially like get by. And then I also knew that when I made a song, I could say whatever I wanted, like personal life wise or whatever, and nobody would think twice. I could get like crazy stuff off my chest. And if you like it, you just like the song, but you never really tie it back to like the person. You know, you always internalize mm-hmm. the songs you like. And so, yeah, I was just using it as like a little diary instead of going on Facebook and saying everything. I just put it in a song. So, yeah, I feel like writing, like especially when you do it extensively, you can learn a lot about yourself, you know? Yeah. Just like what's going on in there. Even more so, as a listener, if you, like a lot of my favorite artists, when I hear their songs, it's a strange like cry for help that like people don't acknowledge, right? Yeah. Like, we don't ever think about like, the weird things like people say, like people say some really sad stuff in really good songs. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. eat that stuff up. We we like abuse like people's emotions. Like uh I, I'm just like thinking of songs and like there's some some of those people are local, so I don't want to like say their names. But yeah, people will say stuff in a song, like really like bear their soul. And those would be their best types of songs. And it's just like, what do you do when you know that your art comes from a place of pain? And it's like people want more of your art. So in a weird way, they almost want more pain from you because that's like your inspiration. You know, like yeah. it's a weird thing. It's a, it's a strange thing, but it's like we love it. We eat it up. We love heartbreak songs. Rod Wave is huge because like we don't care that Rod Wave gets his heart broken. Like give me more heartbreak. You know, like, we, want, we want a sad Rod Wave. We do. <laughs> it's For real. a strange dynamic. It's a that strange is. thing. Dude, on that note, I haven't brought this topic up on the podcast in a while, but um. On that note, how do you feel about Logic as a hip hop artist love and, and everything he's gone through and I, like? I love Logic. I, I do too. Yeah, I think he's fire. He gets unnecessary hate. Yeah. I don't understand it. How do you feel about him like retiring and all that? Have you heard interviews post his retirement, kind of like how he's been talking about it all? No, nah, to be honest with you, I don't watch too much artist interviews. Um, but no, nah, put me on him. What, what's he been saying? He's been like. Uh, well, he he's he seems very happy. I will say that it does seem like stepping back from just like all the pressure and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, he he's like one thing that I, it made me wonder like hmm, what really is going on in his head because he he was kind of talking like he regrets going more of like the the pop like hit records right. type like vibe that he was going for for a while. But like but I see why he did that. You know, what oh, I mean? sure. as an artist, like how he evolved and adapted, and like some of those songs were like not super hip hop or like core or whatever. They were kind of cheesy. Like what, like execution? Yeah, like that whole era of like, um, like, like Hallelujah and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. some people what about did, didn't like how he switched it up. I mean, see, those are tough, right? So in pop or like even that form of like hip hop that is pop. At the end of the day, I, I truly believe all artists want a lot of people listening to their music. Nobody wants to be like the cult following guy. Because it's just like, oh, have you heard of insert artist name? And people are like, no, who's that? Nobody wants to be no, who's that? Everybody wants to be, yes, I've heard of Drake. Everybody wants to be, yes, I've heard of Billie Eilish. Even if you don't listen to Billie Eilish's music, you want to be like a figure that people know your name. And that's like mm-hmm. the thing with pop, where it's just like, it's the dark side of making music to a lot of people, but it's like... Pop pays the bills for everybody, mm-hmm. right? Music does not exist without pop. And so, like, yeah, you probably regret it, but, I mean, Logic, right? You got to do it. And, you like, as, as, <laughs> as you really listen to it, like, he's got, um, like, such talent through all his little changes, oh, yeah. in my personal opinion. I Like, I I've loved all the evolutions. Yeah, Very Logic is, like, one of my favorite albums, bro. Freaking yeah, dude. Nuts. And, and when you really listen to some of his raps, like, I feel like some people, uh, like you said, he's a little underrated in that regard because oh, yeah. of, like, however they feel about his, like, always talking about being biracial or his cheesiness or whatever. Yeah. Like, you can't d- diminish the fact that the dude is a great writer. You he, know what I mean? He is. He is. Nah, it's... That's why I kind of like that he's moved on to just, like, doing his own thing, having fun, playing video games, whatever, because he knows that he's like, I can fucking rap. I, I did that thing. But I miss having that figure in, like, hip-hop because, to me, like, guys like Logic push a culture forward, which is funny because people feel like Logic, like, bites, like, Kendrick and J. Cole. Right, like I hear that a lot. Where it's just like uh, Barry Live was like, "Good Kid, Mad City," but like fake, and I'm like, "No, it's not." Right? <laughs> Whatever. But like him, like playing video games on stage, is like the coolest thing in the world to me. Like for a show, if I got to see my favorite artist gaming, 
that's my ticket. I, I got my money's worth. Right. Like, I enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, he, yeah, he's dope. I don't know. I, yeah, that's strange. Yeah, he's always, and he's always just been himself. And that's yeah, one thing exactly, I've respected yeah. too. And like, you call it cheesy or whatever for like, like crying on stage or whatever he was doing. Dope. But like, he's going through some oh, stuff. Fire. You know that's what I mean? Fire. Yeah. Give me more of that. No, that's dope. No, stop about the hate. I'm, I'm not here for it. For real, dude. Yeah, logic does get unnecessary hate. So much. Yeah. So much. Don't get it. Let's we'll take a quick break. Is he a gamer now? Yeah, I think he's, so. a, he's a Twitch gamer. Yeah, dude, he got signed to Twitch. He's like doing big, big uh, money Twitch stuff. The albums, the Logic albums are fucking fire. Dude. Yeah, dude. Did you you heard his last one? Uh, under uh, no pressure is what it was called. No pressure, the one with J Cole at the end. No. Uh, okay, so dude, if you haven't listened to it, you have to. Yeah. No pressure is the name of his last album that he dropped. Um, he dropped it right when Dom dropped. Um, uh, what's uh, going on? Yeah. Same day, I think. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it was his last album, and he called it No Pressure because Under Pressure was his like debut, yeah. and then this is him kind of passing it on and whatever. And he just did whatever he wanted, and and it was it was cool. It, it was like almost like him going back to his roots of like the YouTube videos where he would like nice, just be spitting nice. and stuff, and he just plays around with it, and it's a great album. If you if you haven't heard it, I, yeah, I highly I recommend it. it. For sure. But uh, we should reset the camera, so we'll yeah, take a quick yeah. break, and then we'll come back for part two. Enjoy the ad. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When we were trying to get this podcast off the ground, we had a lot of questions like, how do we record an episode? How do we get our podcast and all the apps people like listening? How do we make money from the podcast? And the answer to every one of these questions is simple. Really simple, actually. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid right now. In fact, that's what we're doing by reading this ad. And see, I got mad love for Anchor because we are... How long are we into this podcast? Eight? No, uh, a year and eight months? Yeah. Almost, almost. We're, we're going to be coming up on two years soon. Yeah, dude. Um, in fact, next, no, actually next month will be two years. And I got to say, two years to this date, Anchor is the only ad that's been rocking with your boys. So. And we've never had a complication. No, never a complication with Anchor. We got um, it out every Monday. They really are the greatest distributor service that we could ask for. So if you've always wanted to start your own podcast, and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start. That's anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. (laughs) Have you heard of the needle drop? Uh, what's his name? Anthony Fantana on YouTube. He did oh yeah! Music. Oh man, he fucking ripped on, bro. Yeah, dude. <laughs> ripped on, bro. It seems like every like album. Was that that guy you showed? Yes, oh, yes. Because yeah, yeah. he hates on Logic so heavy. And he then, does. Yep, <laughs> yep. Does. And then does. some of it's justified because the dude's like really smart with music and stuff. Yeah, it's, like he is, technical he is. reviews, but I it's like albums I love. He, he reviews it, he like shit. I don't like Vampire anymore. And I tried. I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna let you do that. But like that song Vampire, I was like, fuck, bro. He said it was like um. What was it? What song did he compare it to? Not a Mariah Carey song. It's some fucking crazy shit. I don't know if you remember. Like, he was talking about like, the song Vampire What Could Possibly Go Wrong. He's just like, I don't know. He did. He bugged out on that. Yeah, bro. I'm partial to that album, bro. I, I recorded uh, some of the vocals on it. I recorded on the. Uh, what's his face? What song? Chicken Tenders. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking nuts, yeah. I wonder sometimes how far back some of those tracks go. It wasn't that long ago. Really? Yeah, he, he can't. But does he just kick it like at the facility when he's visiting? Oh no. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh yeah. Has his like energy changed at all since like He's different. Yeah. It's it's, it's definitely different for sure. Like I haven't seen him I saw him in high school and he was a dope dude. Yeah, but... no, yeah. He's a lot more stoic now. Um but it's a whirlwind, like yeah, I don't know, because I that shit is fucking nuts, and I think it would happen to anybody, but the, like, 
roller coaster ride that was his like life mm-hmm. was fucking nuts. Mm-hmm. Fucking crazy. I, I don't know. I, I can't imagine. You're not supposed to be the same with that level of success. You're not supposed sure. to be the same. You're not supposed yeah. to be the same person. And imagine like after performing for like some like a giant crowd at like Flognar or whatever, like yeah. coming back, it's like what Kyle was saying at the skate park. We skated in this giant skate park, and he's like, "Bro, you're gonna go to Veterans now and like just fly off the ramps because it's so little." It'd be the same kind of vibe. Yeah. Where it's like, bro, the environments he's been around, you know? What yeah. I mean? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's conditioned. Like, yeah, something like that. Did you ever listen to any of his old music, like that they that they've taken down throughout the? Uh... Yeah, that's all the time. I, I, you know, YouTube. Oh, I know. I just, you know, pirate shit like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But there's one song I don't know if you have ever heard. It's called Divine Intervention. It's yeah. with it's with him and Matt Black. Danny's been trying to get his hands on that song <laughs> to listen to it, bro. Yeah, I'll pay top dollar for that song. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, um, yeah, for real though, it's a great song, dude. And yeah, it's like it, it got taken down, you know, whenever he popped off and stuff. But yeah, it was like a SoundCloud song that he had on. With, with Matt Black way back in the day. Mm. Super dope. Hmm. Super dope. Yeah, I gotta yeah. talk to him. Yeah. Shout out. Hit me up, Matt. Is there any tracks you've uh, you've been a part of coming out of the facility that you're super proud of? Like any songs, even if whether they did well in like whatever things that you thought were like yeah, gems uh, that came out of there? Whole bunch, whole bunch. Um, what are like three off the top of your head? Three off the top in of my head. In no particular head. order, of course. Uh, chicken tenders, because. That's just fucking nuts. Uh, that sounds sick. Yeah, chicken tenders. Uh, Three AM in Chicago. Um, it's a song that I did with Brendan. It was like the first time I ever hit a million, so I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's just almost at like two million. It's so, a great song. Yeah, yeah, super good. Uh, and then so, <laughs> damn, this one's not out, but I think it's gonna come out sometime this year. There's this guy named uh, Matt Hunter. He um, he pulls up to the studio one day and like Kathy hits me up to record it or like do some like vocal recording on it at least. And at the end of the session, I was like, "Yo, this kid Matt, he's like super cool. I knew he was signed or whatever. He's like a Latin artist. It's like, "Yo, Matt's like really cool. He's like an amazing vocalist. And like anytime you say, "Yo, Matt, that was a great take," he's just like, "Oh, thank you, thank you." Right? <laughs> I'm like, "Wow, he's so humble for somebody who's so good." And they're like, "Yeah, you know, Matt comes from money." And I was like. What does that mean? And they're like, uh, he um, he was Diego from Go Diego Go. No yeah. Way. And I was no like, way. what? <laughs> <laughs> like, Diego's supposed to be like. <laughs> 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 I was like, nah, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't remember the name of that song. Uh, Skeletons uh, by Brendan and Nate. Um, Man, I, I wish I would have got my hands on that uh, JoJo Post song by uh, Apollo Fresh, but I didn't get a chance to get to that. Um, there's a Busy Crook and Nate Traveler song. I recorded some Nate's vocals on that. Damn. Yeah. If I Jump? Is yeah. that the song? Yeah. I love yeah, that yeah. song. Yeah, that way Nate can sing, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. That was another one of those songs that, like, the first time I heard it, I was like, that is from here? Yeah. That? Yeah. And the yeah. whole album, I'm like, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all my stuff being like, <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, that's probably the main ones right there. Man, that's got to be a dream job. How does that affect your own music? Like, uh, even aside from like, if, if of course doing features on songs impacts your music, but if you're just working on something for someone, mm-hmm. how does that affect your music creativity and flow? So that's how I get better. So I, I don't like do vocal training or anything like that. Like engineering makes me a better artist um, because pretty much I'm getting. A whole bunch of people all the time that are different like vocal styles different production styles different approaches to music different approaches just to working like how they work and it makes me have to be very flexible with how i approach music mm-hmm. a lot of times if all you do is work on your own stuff you're like i work this way i get up i go i write da, 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 da. and so me i'll like work a million different ways i'll write a song while taking a shower because i'm just like i don't have time or in, on the flip side, I'll be at the studio, like sitting on the floor in the booth, writing songs, like, you know, like yelling up to the microphone, coming up with lyrics like that, <laughs> right? You know, like I'll try different effects that I wouldn't have thought of for myself, but while like doing effects for somebody else, I'm like, whoa, this is cool. You know, that's what, all right, this is how you do that, right? Um, and I've just 
learned like you were talking about Naruto earlier. Uh, it's like almost like build like a shining god for like styles. Right? Yeah. I see somebody do it and like for example, say I'm recording like uh, like Nate or somebody, and I'll see him do like a cool like run. I'll, I'm hearing him do this take a whole bunch of times, and I'm just like, oh, that's how you do it, and now I know how to do that. What? And that's got to be crazy. Yeah, and so it's like I can develop different styles off of just hearing people do like a million takes. Or like uh, all my stuff is super polished because I get a lot of reps with my own voice and with other people's voices. So yeah, it's, it's not. It's You're not putting a, in the 10,000 hours for sure. Yeah, no, way past that. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah so it, it helps me a lot, like staying creative and like being like uh, versatile. Nice. What's your typical like day-to-day like throughout the week with, with your workflow? Um, it's a crazy schedule. One day, like I'll work three hours, one day I'll work 12. Um, but I'm always at the studio, like every day. I just pull up just to practice. I gotta do like a lot of like training because once again, I didn't go to school. So I like set my own curriculum for how I learn because I know that I can know more. And because I didn't go to school and like nobody told me, you know enough about this topic, here's your A or B. I'm always like chasing more knowledge. So my day kind of is like wake up, um, head to the studio, and then like spend an hour listening to music there, an hour like developing a new skill, and then the remaining time like just working on other people's songs. Dang, yeah, that's dope. Yeah, constantly training. So <clears throat> have you, like in producing, have you, is there like, do you, fuck, how much I trying to say? Is there anything you've learned, like piano or anything, like, so, because of producing? A little bit. Like, I don't play, but I understand a lot more uh, music theory stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, I would go on the piano and learn basic chord structures and chord progressions. And then when somebody brings in a song, I don't make beats, but I'll, like, flip the hell out of your beat. Or I can be like, yo, we can come up with these harmonies that, like, are just basic, like, piano concepts. That, like, I'll play the basics on something. To understand it, break it down, and recreate it with voice, like voices. Damn, yeah, it's cool. So, so at the facility, are you are you like an uh, like an engineer? Mm-hmm. Is what they call an engineer? Yeah. Damn, damn, dope, dude. Fuck, that's sick. And you're able to do that full time? Do you have to juggle any sort of like side hustle or or day job or anything like that? Nah, I was doing that for like three years to the point where I was just like, I don't do that anymore. Was yeah. that was that transition like? Was it a pretty sure like it just makes sense sort of thing, or was it like? Was it was there any like stress on that decision? I mean, so you imagine you're working night shift for three years, doing like crazy hard new stuff, and then working at a studio. You see your dream job for like three hours in the day, and you're working at like your hell, like nightmare, for eight or ten and a half hours a day. Yeah. And it like does something to you where like you feel like you can't go back, right? Like you've seen the promised land, and you chase the fuck out of it. Right, because you know, you know what's waiting for you. If I like slip up for a second, I I know what I'm going back to. I know what my life is. So yeah, I, I did it for as long as I could, and I'm hungry as fuck. Like I I can't go back. I I can't. So I would never juggle another job like that again. I just have to like music has to work, and I, I know what it takes to put the work in. So so it works. That's all there's to it. Yeah. And I feel like everyone needs that. Like I feel like everyone needs to at least try to like do that transition try to take some jump you know risk risky decision and like you know if you see something that feels like that's what you need to be doing like it's so scary sometimes to to turn onto that path or like to take that jump but if you never do that'd be like you know what i mean you could you could just if you just get in the comfortability or or, uh you get so used to that comfort you know that you're just like well this is a guaranteed paycheck every week and you know if i if something goes wrong if 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 and just taking that jump, you never go back. I mean, it comes with pros and cons. The guaranteed money, yeah. right? Like it is. Uh, so Drive you insane about, though. Yeah, no, no, oh my God. Making your money off of art is very fickle. In a bad economy, the first thing people are gonna do is stop making music, right? Cause it's just like, it's a hobby for a lot of people. But that's my job. I can't afford for people to stop making music. So I gotta deliver like crack. It has to be mad addictive, like pulling to a facility and working. But I, I get being scared of not making the leap, you know? Like, mm-hmm. That shit is fucking terrifying. Yeah. What if you fail at your dream? Like, Brendan Bennett is working on an album, and, like, all over the album, there's, like, the question of, like, what do you do when your dreams die? If you make the leap and it doesn't work, 
your dreams are dead. That's just scary. It's not even just like you're broke. It's like, damn, I'm a regular person for the rest of my life. Dang. Yeah, I don't think about it like that <laughs> yeah, sometimes. No, no, it's, yeah, it's terrifying. It's like I'd rather think that I could be great and I just didn't have the opportunity than have the opportunity and know I can't be great. Dang. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's fuel to the fire, you know, because if you do, because I, I think about it where it's like, well, if it doesn't work, then I could get a serving job anywhere. Like I got right. experience. But if if that happens, right. that's going to be my brain forever. I tried and I failed. Right. You know what I mean? But that just makes you try harder. Yeah, because you don't want to fail. Like, you know, like when you play sports, like football or something, and they tell you like to leave it all on the field. And the idea is that at the end of the game, you should not have energy. You should be dead because you put your all into that game. So it's kind of the same with chasing your dream, where it's like, if it doesn't work, there's a level where you're just like, hey, man, I tried. Like, I really, 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 really tried. Not like I slept in a little bit more today. Like, I woke up early, I stayed up late, and I gave it my all. And I I believe that even if you can't reach the highest heights, you can make a fucking living. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. for like, sure. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'd rather make a living doing some shit I like. No, I'd like to be rich and do some shit I wouldn't like. But, I mean, if I'm not going to be rich, <laughs> I'm not going to do some shit I wouldn't like. That's the point. <laughs> if I'm not going to be rich, I'm not doing some shit I wouldn't like. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's it. Yeah, you can, yeah. One That's thing, funny. one thing we do ask people is, um, because we all, we, me and Danny always talk about this winning streak and stuff, and like just trying to treat life as, as like, opportunities to grow and and improve and whatever and reach your eventual goals. If everything in your plan goes according to plan and your, you know, your seeds come to fruition, what do you think your life would look like in five years? What do you want it to look like, rather? Shit. And it's hard to like dwell on, but like even just to touch on the thought, you know what I mean? Good. It's weird because I'm I'm having a mix where. I love where my life is now. This is what I wanted when I was a kid, right? I sat there and I thought about it. Like, as I reached for more, I wanted to just make music. I, I can, like, work on music, and I don't worry about my bills being paid. That was my goal. I did that. So now I need a new goal. And what the new goal is, I mean, you know, everybody wants a Grammy, it's a platinum plaque, all that shit. I want that. I'm going to get it. But, uh, yeah, five years. Five, five years, I'm going to touch a Grammy. Um... We're looking at two or three platinum plaques minimum. Um, and just working at the like highest level at the upper echelon where I walk in the room, I'm the guy. You know, not like working with the guy, I'm the guy. The room, yeah, nobody in the room is telling I'm in the room. That, that's the goal for five years, right? Um, yeah, to be the guy, to be the man, to be the fucking man. Yes, right. sir. That's a good I goal. Yeah, dude. And I feel like that needs to be the goal, you know? Like, that, you, you gotta just, like, at least try for your all because yeah. you know what you could be. Yeah, mm-hmm. facts. 100%. And I think we all want to, but, like, we're all really, really, really scared to because we're really scared to fail. And so, like, that fear of failure doesn't necessarily make you worse, but it makes you not want to practice because it's like, what's the point of doing this thing? If I can't get what I want, like you guys know who uh, Shannon Sharp is? Yeah, yeah, football player. You ever seen that video on Instagram where he's just like, uh, he's like doing a, a workout. It's on his IGTV. He's doing like a workout, and he was like, you know, people ask me, Shannon, how do you know if it's a good workout? And he was like, if at the end of the workout I don't say to myself, why am I even doing this? What's the point? Then it wasn't a good workout. Like when you're working so hard that it's like, damn, what's the point? You know, like. That shit is nuts. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. it. Not like, ah, uh, I'm afraid I won't make it, so I'm not going to practice today. It's like, nah, I practiced today, so now I'm afraid because I practiced. Not the opposite, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's real. That's real as hell. Do you have a lot of performing experience? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, uh, I do, actually. I performed a lot. So how the Kavas were set up, because question for you guys. Why is Kava, like, lounges the place where people perform at here? I, that, it's like, it's always a different Kava. <laughs> Why never, is that? <laughs> it's never, like... My theory, my theory <laughs> is that the, like, bar gigs are a huge thing around town, like, yeah. bar gigs and stuff. And for, like, the FGCU crowd and, like, yep, younger crowd or people that don't drink or whatever, that's, like, kind of the, the same kind of vibe. You know, open mic at a bar, but the bar just has Kava. Okay, cool, You know what I mean? Cool, cool. Cause I've noticed that, like yeah, that's straight up, yeah. Yeah, I've done a lot of Kava stuff, and that's a, it's a different crowd for sure. It's super hippies, which cool people. They they like music. They have a great taste in music. I think if the hippies like your shit, 
you're onto something. Yeah. Like, you know, like that whole, like, they know the frequency of the earth shit. Yeah, so they start going like this. You're like, all right. Yeah, if somebody's, like, doing a little, like, fire baton swirl to your shit, then you're <laughs> That's how XMBIX got so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they played there every Thursday and killed it every single time. Yeah, no, I'm sick. They're, like, they're, they're, like, chemistry is fucking insane. Um, no, yeah, I performed a lot. Uh, there was a, a story, too, um, where Brendan and I went to Chicago and it was like our first time ever going to Chicago and we like uh, we were supposed to do a show with a whole bunch of other acts and for whatever reason his management who's like my management now too as well they pulled him out and they were just like we're gonna put our own, our, our own show on so there's only two acts which is like Brendan and Eddie and it's just like in Chicago for the first time this is not gonna go over well we sold that shit out we were fucking rock that shit crazy yeah Damn. nuts what so, were the nerves like before that show Oh, no, I was on Hennessy. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> what was the feeling like after the show? Oh. When when you see that light up, bro, that's got to do something to you. Yeah, no, it was great. Um, I mean, when I sobered up, I was like, whoa, what the fuck? There's videos of it. It's nuts. Like, there's a part where I sent them a demo of, the, of a song I had called Yesterday. Um, and somehow they, like, distributed that demo amongst their friends and through, like, word of mouth. By the time I performed it, people, like, Knew the words? words. Wow. And I was like, what the fuck? Bro, that's got to feel different. It was, it was crazy. I was like, this one's fine. All right, yeah, once you wake up the next morning, you got to be just thinking, like, bro, I'm doing something right. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the little wins are big wins when, like, you remember what, who you wanted to be as a kid. And you're just like, I might not be the biggest star, but I never saw myself doing that as a kid. I was like, yeah, I fucking made it. And there's a whole bunch of artists that just don't do shit like that. So I was like, yeah, yeah this fucking cool, bro. That shit's nuts. And yeah. to go out on that limb to go from like a guaranteed show to just like just you guys, that's like, oh, what's this? But then yeah. the huge payoff, bro. Yeah, it, nah, it's nuts. Nah, like my shows too. I kind of, I always put myself in the mind of like the spectator, right? So I feel like I've seen a lot of shows where artists perform and there's that thing where the artist is like this and the crowd's like this. So the artist just keeps going harder like this and the crowd's just like this. And then somebody pulls out their phone. And it's over. They're done. Because nobody gives a fuck anymore. They're, they're oh, on the text. No, nobody cares about that performance. Yep. So I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to do this. Right? So I got scared about like shit like that. And I started, uh, started doing this thing where every time I do like a show, I always have to like teach people lyrics to the songs. Because I know that going into a show, people aren't going to know the lyrics to the songs. I'm local. That makes fucking sense. Right? So, you know, just do the hook once. Teach people the hook. I do not stop until I know that I'm going to get artist or, or like crowd cooperation. And the show's been lit ever since, bro. You know what I'm saying? I haven't Damn. taken the hell yet. Sick. Right. Uh, have you, do you have any highlight performances from around here? Like any, any places you performed that, that had that kind of yeah, standout yeah, moment? Were, oh, there was a Save the Youth event. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Hippie Circle put on this show. Um, it was like me, Sly, um, 9600 was there. Oh, man. <sighs> a couple other people. It was fucking dope that was one of my favorites i brought out the, the live auto tune right yeah damn like, no way turn that shit out yeah <laughs> yeah that's sick where was that at i think it was at like one of those like breweries which is the other thing it's breweries and Congress. yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah millennial yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> not around. i think it was millennial yeah yeah i think it was millennial yeah, that was a good one that sounds like a dope show did you go to the um casey parks release there i did not and i was mad because i worked on like that whole fucking project I had a session that day, so I couldn't. Dang. Like, I, you guys were there. How was it? It was good. I mean, yeah. Bro, I was at one point, because that was right after my knee injury, right after my surgery. So I was on one leg and crutches, had my art set up and everything. Uh -huh. And I was just going to stay in my chair. I'm like, well, I'm next to the stage. I can still see and whatever. But then whenever, I don't even remember who what who was up whenever I was like, nah, I got to stand up. So I get up. And then I remember during the back house performance and everything, I was up there with my crutches. Oh, yeah. I was getting knocked around and Marla Vachi was like, oh <laughs> shit. And he was like protecting, shielding me. It was, it was sick. Danny jumped up on stage. Yeah, that was sick. It was a great show. It was a great yeah, show. Yeah, it was good, but I'm sure there'll be more hopefully sometime soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We got to get it rolling on that. Uh, I do want to ask who, who were some of the first, Couple people, if you can remember that you that you started working with around here when you, when you first got here. Uh, Chris Daniels, Hollow Fresh. Um, the first person that I knew that was from here was Nate. Oh, um, did wow. a song with Nate early on. Um, 
And then from that, Nate introduced me to Cappy, Dom, and then from Dom, I met Brendan. So that was like pretty much where I met. Mm-hmm. Like, How'd you meet Nate? Nate? Crazy story. <laughs> uh, I'm at class at FGCU, and I got out of class, um, and I was like, there was a girl, I forget her name, it was like Brittany something. Was like, she's like popular around here too, whatever. And she's like, yo, what are you doing after class? And, and I wasn't making music, but I had lie, because I, oh, you know, I got to make a scene, I'm to take a friend. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm going to go home and uh, work on a song. And she's like, oh, no way. My friend makes music. His name's Nate Traveler. And I was like, okay, cool. So she puts me on to him, and I hear the sound kind of like, oh, 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 yeah. So I, like, uh, send him some songs, and there was one song that, like, caught his attention, and he was like, yo, like, let's meet at a, a stereo rack, and we just, like, what? Really talk. Yeah, and it was crazy. And then we did a song. It was crazy. Do you remember what the song was? It was not a good song, so we didn't keep that song up. I don't remember it. Nah, couldn't tell you. And it's been history ever since. Been history ever since, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Nate. He's yeah. a dope dude. I remember seeing him run miles. I would be skating at the Astero Rec Center, and I saw him one time pull up, just like running yeah. miles around the lap. I'm like, fuck dope, yeah, dude. So dope. Yeah, <laughs> next to realist. Oh, um, do people ever shoot music videos at the facility? That's something I was wondering. Cause I've never been there. I don't know what it looks like, like in person. But I've seen the video, like the photos people post on Instagram or yeah. on their stories. It looks dope. I mean, they do, but I usually don't stick around for stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> audio guy, little cameo in yeah, the back. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they they shot videos there. True. Yeah, I've seen it a couple times, but I, I just don't stick around. Yeah, I feel that. Um, look. Five in, do you have any projects coming up that the people could look out for? Like, uh, uh, you, do you have any like uh, albums or anything that you're working on? I mean, when it comes to my own stuff, uh, I never know. It's kind of like down the pipe. I kind of just work, and like, if something really, 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 really inspires me, that'll come out. Other than that, I'm a poor planner with those kind of things. That's probably good though, just to go with the creative flow, just however you feel it. That's all I know. Yeah, I, I, I'm an overthinker. If I, if I told myself I was going to work on a project, I'd get two songs in, and then on the third song, I'd hate the first song. And I wouldn't ever get anything done, because after a month, I'm just like, oh, I'm so much better than the first songs I started doing for this project. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, I'll keep things in a vault that I'll like hear back and go, like, oh, that, that's dope. We can like revisit that. But as far as like planning it out, I'm not good at that. I'm, I, I cannot do that. You probably have hella stuff recorded, huh? A lot. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I ask because I feel like a full album from you would be would be something else for sure. That's what they say. Like the features on <laughs> it, even, dude. Like, bro. <clears throat> yeah, for real. I, I can only imagine saying. what that would yeah, look like. For real. Is that in the works? I mean, so that's the goal for this year is to put out a project. It might end up being like a couple singles. Um, I did have an idea. I wish I could disclose it, but I, I can't. It was too fire, and somebody's gonna bite it. But it'd be a theme project for sure. So not just like my normal approach, which would be uh, take all the best songs you have and just dump it. Mm -hmm. It would be something that kind of revolves around like two emotions that I I have juxtaposed to each other. And I I want to like really like lock in on those two things that like evoke a lot of emotion when I think of those. Just like essentially being uh, like loneliness and then like overflowed with love, right? They're, those are like the two things that like I can feel like the strongest and make the best songs about it. So that's all I can say on the project right now. True, that'd be dope. I'll be looking out for that. Yeah. Um. Ah, oh, fuck. What else was I gonna say? When whenever you whenever you see a dope artist around here, like maybe it's up and coming, someone catches your eye. You're like, all right, are you are you more wanting to work with them as like do a song with them or 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 engineer their work? How does that work? Yeah, I wonder what goes through your mind. Um, it goes at both. Like, I can't separate the two. I, I'm an artist engineer, so I just want to do something, right? And kind of by listening to their work, I can kind of gauge where I can help. So if I hear something and I'm like, damn, fire, I don't make music like that. I need to get in on this, though. You need to come to the studio now. We need to crank, right? But at the same time, I'm versatile enough where that just doesn't happen much. So most of the artists I do meet, I'm like, oh yeah, we need to get that in there, right? And do like a, a 
them a song together. So I, I think in my mind it goes engineer first with them and then like see if we're compatible enough to like do a song together. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause yeah, that's that's important. By engineering first, I get to learn a lot about you rather than just jumping in like head first. Like I want to do a song and then realize that I don't want to work with you. Yeah, yeah, that makes um, sense. And I'm sure I'm sure you've gotten pretty versatile to it at engineering as far as doing any genre. Like you said, you worked with that Latin yeah, artist for yeah, engineering. Yeah, no, at the end of the day, music is music, right? And so, like somebody hit me up to do like an Afrobeat like song, and they're they're just like, "Have you ever mixed Afrobeat before?" And I was like, "Bro, the first time I mixed pop, that thing hit a million. Right? <laughs> like, try me. <laughs> like, don't do it. Like, you know? <laughs> like, uh, nah. So yeah, I mean." Yeah, nah, I, I'm, I'm pretty versatile with anything. Mm-hmm. I haven't, like, really tried, like, rock rock, but I would love to. Like, I don't think there's anything I can't tackle. That's dope, dude. Yeah. So you're passionate about it. You're passionate about engineering and just being involved with music. Yeah, That's right. dope, dude. I, 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 I sleep and breathe that thing. It's got it's dude working at the facility all the time must be so inspiring because you get to work with people like Promo and Cappy and like yeah, that's got to inspire yeah, the hell yeah, out of yeah. you. No, nah, they're dope. They're dope. <laughs> Promo always like reminds me of uh, the first time he met me and I was like asking questions about how to like use some of your equipment and he'll talk about it like I'm his kid. He'll just be like, yeah, you know, I'm Eddie used to you know. So you know. <laughs> 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 just like, <laughs> I gave him the the 101. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then same with Cap. Like I met Cap interviewing Cap. Um, and I was always interested in like his knowledge and, you know, and I can learn from like anybody else who knows more than me. I'm like a sponge with that shit. So yeah, it, it's definitely inspiring for sure because everybody who pulls up is they're fire, man. Like, mm-hmm. That's how it comes down. Um, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a dream job, man. It's a dream job for real. It's pretty That's dope. Good. That's dope, dude. Yeah, I'm happy for you, bro. It oh, sounds like you're you. fucking, you're living out here. You know, I'm trying to get a day at a time. I heard that. Heard that. Yeah, bro, you're on a winning streak. Oh, man. Um, where can they find you at? Like, all over the internet, where can people find your things at? Um, so, I keep the handles pretty uniform. It's usually Eddie Rock 239 uh, across the board. Um, and that's Instagram, Twitter. I don't use Facebook. Uh... And then my SoundCloud is not updated at all. Everything else is the rest of the DSP. So like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, and not so much YouTube these days. I got to get on that. I'm going to slack my YouTube game. Uh, it's hard to keep up with all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah, it's tough. I do want to ask before we before we wrap this up, is there anybody that maybe it, it hasn't came out yet and you don't have to release who or whatever, but is there anybody that you've worked with or maybe wanting to work with talks of it uh, in the area that that's like new that like any, anybody new like like C Stunna or anybody hey, Jay Drew I've not worked with C Stunna like I like his stuff a lot though he's one of those other people like where the hell does kids record at yeah you know, for real like, yeah uh, yeah so artists I've been working with that are newer um, and like I said you don't have to name drop if you don't want to I just wanna no nah, that one I don't mind for me. as much uh, there's this kid named Jen Clean fire. Uh, there's another kid, Stowe, super sick. Um, trying to think of other newer artists. Sebastian Portillo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Flames, he's, dude. He's sick. Yeah, sick. Uh, those are pretty much the main newer acts that I got. I've like had my eye on. And oh I'm yeah. Just like, okay, I gotta like see what's going on here. Yep. Yeah, I've heard of Sebastian. I'll have to look into the other two. Oh, the other two are sick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I. I I should just uh, finish wrapping up a session with Jen like uh, two days ago. He's he's nuts, man. He's really good, really good. Same with Stow. I think they both have songs coming out in like three weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, there's so much talent around here. Yeah, and yeah. it's dope to have people like you, bro, and in places like the facility to like really help facilitate things, get people cranking out quality music that yeah. literally could be on the radio. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like half of what we do is like teach people. So it's like you come in not knowing shit. And then it's like, you got your session, but you learn shit that you can take to any other studio. Like, yeah. That's, that's kind of what makes the facility kind of beautiful mm-hmm. that way. Hell yeah. Have you been to any of Nate's uh, mental health meetups? I have not, man. I haven't I been like either. Every time he puts up, like, 
something for it, like the meetup time or whatever. Like I'm just never on social media that day. Yeah. I have to delete Instagram for like a whole day and I'll come back and be like, what the fuck? Everybody was over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I'll work till like an hour after the thing's yeah, over and I'm like, yeah, damn, yeah. dude. I just see like a picture, like everybody looks so happy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's dope too. That's is that where you heard of Sebastian Portillo through that uh link no, up? No. Colliding with Mars. That's who you, yeah. Cause like, it's just like, like, it's cool just to like, I'm, I'm sure artists just all just sharing that moment, just sitting out in nature, just fucking talking about things. It's gotta be so healthy. Are there, are there any artists you guys think I should know about? Cause you guys know. Jay DeRue is someone who's, who, with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude's ill. Um, who else knew bro? You know, um, One Way? One oh, Way course, TV. Yeah. One Way yeah, TV's yeah, yeah. a man. Yeah, One Way's one of the people I've been uh, trying to link with on my song too. Oh, that would, that would be sick. awesome. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> this guy, that would be awesome. He's like spazzing out. Yeah, bro, I'm no, excited. That would be sick. Uh, <laughs> our roommate, uh, Biscuit, actually. He, he uh, I've been really impressed with him. He's got a little studio set up yeah. in his room. He produces beats oh, yeah. and uh, he makes his own music too. But um, but he's just been really uh, experimenting and learning with uh, producing beats and everything. And I feel like he's going to be doing some oh, cool stuff. New, new artist, I am Julie. Yeah, oh, yeah I do. Yeah. I know him. Yep. Yeah. Fire, bro. Fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's really fired. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were going to have him on here, weren't we? A long time ago. Yeah, right when we started. Because I asked Casey Parks at a Kava event. Uh, we were talking, and he heard about us doing the podcast, and he was just listing, like, yo, you should have him on, him on, him oh, on. Oh, you guys might be thinking of the other <laughs> You guys might be thinking of the other June. There's two Junes. Two Junes? Yeah. What? White June and Black June. <laughs> Casey's talking about White June more than likely. Yeah, his Instagram's I am June. Or, no, oh, no. Oh, yeah, June. Oh, yeah, June. Yeah, I think that's what Casey knows. I don't think Casey knows I am June. Oh, well, what's the June you're talking about? I am June. Both June's fire. Oh, okay. I'll have to check out other June. Yeah, no. White June's also super sick. Um, but yeah, Black June also crazy fire. So Hell yeah. And that's I am June? Yeah, um, that's I am June. Socials? Okay. For sure. I'll check him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Two Junes, dude, in the same area. <laughs> Both killing it. Yeah. Good thought. All right, where can they find us at, bro? You can find us at City of Palms Podcast. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, watch us on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube. We appreciate you listening. We're on TikTok now. We're on TikTok. TikTok. Subscribe to our TikTok. That's it. Episode 85. Thank you, Eddie Rock. Coming on. Hit him with the outro, Soren. Yeah.